Good morning. Um, I'm so happy to see you guys back. I hope you all had a Merry Christmas. Uh, I just wanted to kind of just share this thought that God gave me this week as I was, um, I actually was reflecting on Pastor Justin's sermon from a couple weeks ago and he was talking about our testimonies and how like the no testimony thing, people brush it off, but um, to really just be able to reflect on all of the incredible blessings that have to happen in your life to be able to have no testimony. Um, I was just thinking about that and being together this morning and how that applies. That all of the things that have happened in our lives, the good and the bad, God has orchestrated it for us to be here together this morning, um, to be healthy and able to just give him the glory and the praise that he deserves this morning. Amen. Like to just be able to stop and think about that and praise him because he brought us here together this morning. Like that is just, that's just crazy to me. I'm so excited. Um, to be here to be able to worship with um, this awesome family that we have here at Northside. So if you'll just stand with me, um, and we're gonna we're gonna get started on giving God some praise and glory that He deserves. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I pray and I hope all had a merry, very Christmas, celebrating Christ's birthday. Amen. And what a wonderful time to come and celebrate our great King, our great Lord. Let us bow our heads and pray this morning. Holy Father, we are so grateful to be in your presence this morning, to acknowledge you as our King, our Lord, our Savior, one who has redeemed us from the sins of the world, one who has kept us by our faith in you, Holy God. Surely you are a good Father. And Lord, we pray this morning as we enter into your presence that you will touch those, Lord, who are uh, looking for answers in their life. Touch those, Lord, who are preparing for another new year, Lord, to come in, that you will open up your vessels of hope, joy, and peace, Holy God. We pray for those this morning who are not doing well in their bodies, Lord, that you would touch them and bring them up higher in you, Lord, that you would give them a healing touch this morning, Jesus, that you would lift them up, Father, where they may be weak. We pray, Father, that you would touch your word this morning that it would come forth as a light of life to us lord that it would bring understanding unto your glory and to your praise and for the purpose of us living in this world we thank you holy god for there's none like you in heaven and earth we pray for those who may be visiting for the first time lord that they may see you only lord the true and living king the king of kings and the lord of lords this morning we trust in you lord to open up all your wisdom unto us this morning that we may learn of you trusting you abide in you be joyful in you walk in you and know that you are god and you are the true and living god in jesus name amen, amen. It tells us to keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life out of our hearts are the issues of life. With all diligence means to have a constant effort to trust in God, a constant effort to walk healthily and, and make sure that we keep three principles this morning. I want to talk about three principles this morning that, that is so important. The three principles are to be careful of our thoughts, when we go into 2021, we should be very careful of what enter in our hearts and how we uh, walk before Almighty God this morning that is able to keep us from falling, able to fix us in the way that we should go this morning. Safeguard our thoughts with good things. Amen. And when you think about safeguarding our hearts with good things, you think about Jesus, right? Amen. You think about our Savior, our Lord, that that, that enable us to receive that joy that only coming from God above. Luke 6, 45 tells us, a good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil heart of bringeth forth which is evil. For the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. From the abundance of of our hearts, our mouth speaking. Amen. So if we want to speak life, we can speak life. We have the authority 
from God above that if we speak life and keep our hearts on good things, even during this time and season when there's so much going on, that he will present himself with us to have joy and peace. The second one is, for out of the heart floweth the issues of life. We can speak death, we can speak life. But Galatians 6, 7, and 8 tells us, but be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whosoever and whatsoever a man soweth, that so shall he weep. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh weep corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit of the spirit shall weep life everlasting. So, this particular verse has given us a choice to make this morning, a choice for how we want to enter in to 2021. Do we want to enter it in with the joy and the life that God presents to us? Or do we want to enter in with patterns of the world and things that we hear that is negative that bring forth false hope? Because Jesus is real this morning. Amen. Jesus wants our hearts to be rejoicing and to have be in peace and to love one another and to share this hope. This is the reason why he came into the world. Amen. This was the birth of, of Jesus Christ on Christmas morning. And we're going to learn through these scriptures or Proverbs this morning how we can learn to be more diligent with our hearts and safeguard it because the enemy will want to infiltrate it and bring forth false hope and doubt in our lives. The third principle is to determine, it determines the course of your life. Your mouth, what cometh out the heart, determines the course of your life. And out of it respond, it should be a yes to Jesus. Out of our heart should always be pointing to our Lord and our Savior. I'm, I'm talking to the church this morning because we have a connection. We have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ this morning. So this message is unfolding itself for our understanding that we can be stronger, more uh, re real in Christ in this 2001 as it comes in. We can gird up our loins and be what God would really want us to be. Because it is the light of the world, which is us, that people are looking at. There is no hope in the world. In fact, we see it every day, the, the declining of integrity, the, the false uh, lies that comes forth that is not lifting up, but is tearing down, it is separating. So the word of God is the word that bringeth forth life in our hearts this morning. It's the word of God that speaketh life to our hearts. And so with these three principles, I believe that if we put them in motion right now before 2001 gets here right now we can see a change in people's hearts and people's lives this morning when we look at the straight gate because God said that straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be that go therein, thereof, because the gate is straight, and narrow is the way, which bringeth life, and few that be that find it. You must follow Jesus Christ in that narrow way, because broad is the way that what leadeth to destruction. Broad is the way that the world is headed. There's so many uh ways people now are saying that you can reach Christ, that you can trust in God, that you can meet the Savior. But narrow is the way. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come into the Father but by me. His purpose of coming into the world was two purposes, to live among us, to show us the way, and to die upon a rugged cross to forgive us of our sins. This is the Lord that we serve this morning. And it should be a joyful occasion, a joyful time for us to look at each other and appreciate one another 
Because look how far God has brought us. Look at the whole year of all the things that have taken place. But God has given us victory after victory with our walk with him. And when I say victory after victory, we still trust in him. We're still walking in him. We still love Jesus. We still give our heart to the Lord. Regardless of what has come forth upon us this year, we have realized our hope is in Jesus Christ this morning. He is the true and living God. He is the one that opened up the doors to our understanding this morning. There are four things that, that is required of us this morning. And I'd like to read them to you from Proverbs, Proverbs this morning. It says, wisdom is the principal thing, which means that wisdom is what we need. Wisdom is what we should be seeking for. Wisdom is, is in the word of God, but it says that in the last verse, but with all that getting, get understanding. With all our reading of the word and trusting in Jesus and, and following the scriptures, receive understanding from it. In Psalm 119, it says, David asked the Lord, let my cry come near unto thee, O Lord, and give me understanding according unto thy word. See, we can read the word and not understand spiritually what the word is telling us. Sometimes we read the verses and we take it the wrong way and we run with it and God is showing us uh, the kingdom way. The kingdom way is the way Jesus lived when he walked upon the earth. The kingdom way is when Jesus was born in a manger and the wise men and those who knew of him came to worship him. We come to worship the true king, the living king this morning. Wisdom is more powerful than we can ever imagine because it gives us understanding of the scriptures and it gives us a hope for tomorrow. When you receive wisdom with understanding, there is a great reward. And what is that great reward? In verse 9 it says, she should give thee a head of ornament of grace and a crown of glory shall she deliver thee. Wisdom shall give thee a head of, of an ornament of grace and crown of glory shall be delivered to thee. Grace has a reward for us when we seek wisdom with understanding. Letting the word concentrate our hearts and let it be melted into our spirit that when we speak, we speak life. We speak what just says the word of God. And it says that it brings joy to the heart when you know that what you have spoken of is of God. Whenever wisdom is embraced with understanding, the flavor of God falls upon us and it will display God's honor and glory. When we become a blessing to others, when we see other people's lives are changing, that is a guarantee, that is a, a, a uplifting of the spirit that we can surely say to ourselves, God is using me. What I'm saying is bringing glory to God. Because there's changes in people's hearts that takes place when they hear the word of God. When they hear it with sincerity, when they hear it coming from a vessel that God is using. And we all, should, this morning should be a vessel that God is using to bring a broken world to light and that is in so much darkness. The Lord will wait upon us. And I love this. The Lord will wait upon us with opportunities and, and an invitation to talk about what is going on in our hearts. He's a God that waits patiently for anything that you're dealing with because he's ready and willing to answer those questions, those needs, even to the healing of our bodies, even to the refreshing of our souls. He wants us to be energized in him so that we can be a blessing to others. It's not just for us. It's not just to entertain or to bring forth uh, glory upon ourselves. But it's all to the glory of our magnificent Lord Jesus Christ. 
He wants the glory. He wants the praise out of our lives. And in return, he would give us our ornament of glory upon our heads. And he would flavor our lives with understanding. In that waiting on the Lord, we will also receive a gentle fragrance of victory in our lives. When we wait on the Lord and wait patiently for him, he will calm down our spirits. He will give us a vessel that is pleasing to him. He will open up doors of opportunity that no man can close because he is the God. He is the structure. He is the one that established our walk in this world. No man is an island. No man is of his own. Every man, every woman, every child, every living creature have to depend on God Almighty Amen. for reviving of their bodies, for the nurturing of their souls, even to the point of living victoriously. Every creature that God has created need him. And when we come to that understanding that we have a God that is able to meet every need and every a portion of our lives, we should rejoice. In fact, that's what the young uh, child, which is Jesus, that's what he did for those who was around him. Everybody that saw Jesus, everybody that was around him during the birth, received the joy of seeing his face, God being with us, God dwelling among us. That's such a wonderful, wonderful feeling to know that God loved us so much that he sent down his only begotten son that whomsoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That brings joy to my soul. It brings a comfort, a relief from this world that is going through all of these different torments of misunderstanding. The word of God brings clear understanding. The word of God opens up our hearts to who God is in our lives. Today is a moment that we can refresh ourselves and turn those issues, the things that may be plundering in our hearts. We can give it to God this morning, knowing that 2021 is right around the corner, knowing that it's a new year coming. I don't know about you, but I want to live more victorious, more uh, yeah. profound, more walking closer to God than 2020. I believe God is not through with us yet. I believe God has great plans for this church and for the moving of the Holy Spirit to touch and save the souls of hearts of people that are lost. I believe God is not through with us yet. And when we proclaim that in our hearts and we know that in our spirits that we serve the true and living God, we should be so rejoicing, so full of hope, so full of understanding that it's not all about me, but it's all about Jesus the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings this morning and his purpose and his love this morning. The wise men came from the east and they brought their treasures and they presented their treasures to the King of the Jews. And as they was traveling, I can imagine the, the turmoil and the problems they had walking through valleys and over hills and through other countries 800 to 900 miles is written that that's how far they had to go. Riding on camels, walking on their feet, allowing, allowing themselves to see the King of Kings this morning. Do you know this should be in our hearts this morning, that we should be seeking to see the face of Jesus. Amen. We should be seeking to be in his presence yes. at all times, not just here in the body of Christ, but wherever we go at, wherever we work at, wherever we shop at, in our communities, those who don't know him, we should be, a, it should be a burning in our hearts that, Lord, I hope when they see me or when they hear me, they can see my Savior. They can see the Lord of my life and what he has done for me. And I want to be an example of that. I want to be an example of his goodness and his mercy. I don't want to get caught up in this world of tangling confusion that never seems to go away. Because the hearts of men are failing. But those who put their hearts in Jesus Christ is getting stronger and stronger and stronger every day. Those who believe in Jesus Christ this morning. 
Matthew 2, it reads from 1 to 12. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the day of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod heard this, this troubled his heart and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is written of the prophets, and thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not the least among the princes of, Ju of Judah. But out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he said unto them, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search for the search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the child, star, they rejoiced with exceedingly joy. Great joy was upon them. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, golds, and frankincense of mirth. And when he was warned, warned, when they were warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. A beautiful illustration of seeking the king. Wise men from the east. The Bible tells us in certain portions that there was very learned men, astrologers, and they believe in magic. They was well learned in the course of the strives of Daniel. Uh, those strolls that was missing for years. They, they must have plundered upon them and they read the story of the newborn birth of Jesus Christ. And they put it in their hearts to search and wait for that star that would come that would bring a holy light. This star would bring a holy light to them and when they saw the star hovering hovering they realized that it was the star that was showing them to Jesus this morning I believe with all my heart that this is how we should seek for the Lord as we live in this world right now as today we should always seek to look for his coming we should always be seeking to see his face because anyone who has seen Jesus' face, anyone who has been in the presence of God, did not go home the same way. Those who truly loved him and realized who he was, that he was the son of the living God, that he came from heaven above to carry on his father's will, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Those who know the truth, story of Jesus and what his purpose was, falls in love with him. So when we look at the illustration of what Jesus is showing us this morning, he's still looking for wise men. He's still looking for people that has a thirst for his righteousness this morning. And this righteousness is of God that only coming from heaven above. And only God could bring this to pass that we may see who we are in our heart. There are five things we should look at it as we look at the wise men this morning. Because we look at them as being well-learned astrologers and studying the stars and capable of 
understanding the mysteries of life. But these five things are really what make, made them wise. When they read the word of God, they believed what they read. When they read the word of God, no compromise, no uh, trying to change it, not trying to focus on what it really meant, but because they were seeking for understanding, they read the word of God and they received it with joy and they believed it. They sought Jesus and realized who he was. When we realize who Jesus was, he, he's the king of kings, he's, he's the Lord of lords. He is the, the perfect image of God that we can see in this life. And in fact, Jesus said, if you have seen him, you have seen the Father. For him and the Father are one. So when we come to that clear understanding that he is the joy, he is the peace, and he is the love that passeth all understanding, that should prick our hearts this morning and say, you know what, Lord? I want to live the way you have called me to live. I want to live the way you want me to live. Amen. Yes. I'm tired of trying to figure things out in my own understanding. I want to do like David did. Lord, give me understanding according to your word. They humble themselves to worship Jesus. We have to humble ourselves before Almighty King and worship him. We talked about your treasures. Wherever your treasures is, there may your heart be also. If your treasure is in Jesus Christ this morning, if all that you have and all that you have uh, uh, plundered up in your life that you think are so precious, allow it to be Jesus this morning. Give it to the Lord. Let him receive that gift. But the greatest gift he wants is your heart. He want your heart this morning. He want your heart to be a display of your treasure to him so that he can make you stronger, more potent, more alive, and more victorious in this life. Because this is who he is. He's a good, good father. Yes, he is. They obeyed the Lord rather than man. When they saw the star, it was a summons in their heart from God to follow that star. Whatever God tells us and lay, lay upon our hearts, we should obey it. Even though we might not understand it, even though it might be puzzling to our hearts, the Lord has given this to us for a purpose because we all have a purpose and he has established in our heart to do something great for him in this life. This life is not given to us as to, to be free as some say in the spirit, but it's really to obey the voice of God who gives us joy and victory in our lives. They truly was wise men. They was wise men because they knew who Jesus was and they knew how to worship Jesus. In fact, this encounter here shows that this is the first encounter of the Gentiles worshiping Jesus. You see, we was a part of the story from the beginning. God had all, already inc incorporated us to be a part of this journey in faith with Jesus Christ. So when we look at these men, these wise men, the, the, mag the Magi's, and how they showed people how to worship the king. This is something that Matthew has written that has been going on for years and years and years and years, showing us how to worship the newborn king this morning. So this morning, my, I believe that I will end it with talking about not only has God given us an opportunity to start a new year. Because there are many who have traveled this road this year and didn't make it. There's many that has, we know for a fact, that has departed from us. But Paul tells us in 
in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In other words, now it becomes personal. This is a personal thing. Yes. We can't look at the other person. Yes. We can't try to figure out how you are living for Christ, how strong are your faith is, why you chose that role, why is God having you to live that way? Because God has made it so personal that it's an invitation to him alone. It is an invitation to Jesus Christ alone. We must make that decision, Lord, regardless of what mama, daddy, or papa, or grandpa, or whatever goes on in my life, I want to have that personal relationship with you so that I can give all my problems, anything that is not understanding in my heart, I can give it to you, and you can bring clarity, and you can bring warmth, and you can bring me to a higher level in you that I can be more like Christ. Jesus wants to be more like him. He wants to be that light in a dying world that has no light, but the light of God, the salt of the earth, is us this morning. We can bring flavor in people's lives even to the point of the saving of their souls. God has given that to us to reach a dying world this morning. And what a wonderful privilege it is this morning if we would come and we would allow God in this coming new year, a year that has never ever been presented, a life for a year that never has been lived, to just thank God that we're here this morning and just give him praise and glory for his birth in this world. Father God, we thank you this morning. We, we glorify you, Lord, for you alone are God. And we know, Lord, that you came not only to save us, but to, to save the whole world, to touch the hearts of all men. And because of that, we can stand in awe of your glory and your praise. Father, we seek for more wisdom in 2000 and, and 20, 2002, Lord Jesus, that we can be more like you. Father, we thank you. In 2022, we pray that hearts will be one to your kingdom. Souls will be uh, looking for a light that is only they can find in you, Lord Jesus. And Father, we pray that as we lift up our hands to heaven, we can just glorify your holy name. Thank you, Holy God. Let us stand. Even our financial needs, Lord, that we ourselves are not even aware of. Father, we thank you. We glorify you this morning. We ask, Lord, that as we enter into 2021, Lord Jesus, that we will enter in with the boldness of spirit to know that you <laughs> took care of us this year. You're going to take care of us next year. And you're going to make provisions out of nowhere. And you're going to see to the needs of your people. You're going to open the doors of opportunity like never before. You're going to shine your light upon us with your grace and your mercy. We ask, Lord, that you let our hearts rest in assurance of your perfect will. That you alone are God and there is no other besides you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Good morning, Northside. Here are this week's announcements. Northside Young Adults, mark your calendars for January 16th at 6 p.m. We're going to have a game night with child care and dinner provided for all. This Thursday at 6 p.m., we ask that you pause and pray for our pulpit committee. Have a great week and a happy new year. Um, just a reminder, we have no midweek services this week. Um, we just pray that you enjoy the new year um, with your families and that you just be able to reflect on his goodness um, each day this week.
So if you'll stand with me, we'll pray. And um, okay. Dear God, I just, I just thank you so much, Lord, for all the ways that um, you're so clearly working in the lives of us at Northside and in the ways that we work in the lives of people in our community. God, you are such a good, good father. Lord, I pray that as we enter this new year, as we um, get to just kind of start a new chapter, um, God, that you'd really just be working in us. Help us to just seek you. And Lord, let us just not be afraid um, for you to take us deeper in our relationship with you, Lord, because we can always get closer. We can always be more like you. And God, I'm just so excited to see what you have in store for each of us, um, God, because you're so good and we just trust you with our future. And there's just such a hope uh, that you've given us for this coming year at Northside. And I just, I just pray a blessing over the year 2021, Lord, that you would keep us all safe and healthy, um, Lord, that you would work all the good things to your glory, all the bad things to your glory. Let, Lord, just let us be um, an example of your blessings and how life with you is joyful, um, even if it's not always easy. And God, I just pray for people in our congregation who are, um, who are going through some really tough stuff right now, um, Lord, that they just really need your strength. Lord, I pray that you would give it to them, that your healing hands and your loving hands um, would just be all over their situations, God. Um, I'm just so excited to see how you work in, in those situations too, Lord. Um, I just love you so much, and I just pray that you would help us to seek you in the coming week, Lord, and um, in the coming year, just help us to really just seek you. God, because you're the provider of it all. I love you, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.